finally we're getting back to our A-arms here. Uh, it has been 48 hours, I believe. I said I was going to do it the next day. Things came up, and then, you know, of course, the next day, something else comes up. Hey, YouTube. If you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button. Today we are finally getting back to painting our spindles with the Rust Preventative POR15 on our Articat F1100. Um, I did buy some extra brushes. I bought some bristle brushes, a 1 inch and 2 inch. Uh, I do have an actual painter's brush, which I think is going to do a little better so I can get in these cracks and crevices a little, uh, a little bit better than I can with a foam brush. And then I did also buy this other craft brush set, but I don't think I'm going to have to use these. I will tell you, it, earlier in the video I said that I was going to do this the very next day. Well, that didn't work out. Some things came up. and. What I had to do was wait 48 hours until I could get back out here. By that time, I did have quite a bit of rust and a lot of white flaky powder residue on everything, except the aluminum. The aluminum was fine, the steel rusted, and also had that white residue on there. It doesn't say anything in the instructions about a timeline from when you start to finish, but I'm going to say once you start, you should keep moving forward progressively so you don't allow this to rust more than it should because what's the purpose of sandblasting this and cleaning it down to get it to bare metal if I'm just going to allow it to rust again. But I do know that the POR15 stands for paint over rust and it does need some of that rust to attach to the metal surface. So a little bit is okay, but that white flaky powder, I could wipe it off with my hand. So I took them in the house, I washed them uh, in the slop sink in hot water, and then I let them sit in there for a little bit, brought them outside. We're, uh, we're over 70 degrees out here. They've been out here for three hours, and they're completely dry. So I'm moving forward in the process of the first coat of the POR15 Rust Preventative. Uh, I did shake the can up. Uh, I guess I've seen online where some people say that once you open this, it, once the air gets to it, it's going to start to harden. I did see another video where a guy took a screw, put a screw through here, and he would just dump some out as he needed it. I'm just going to open the lid. I'm going to paint this stuff on, and I'm going to put some cellophane over it and seal the lid back up. We're going to do two coats. And it says a minimum of two to six hours between coats for the rust preventative. Here's the first coat um, that I put on all the A-arms and spindles. The A-arms, the steel, didn't seem to take the paint very well. It almost seemed to want to come off when you put it on. It didn't want to stick because, like I said, it's not thick. It's kind of like a stain finish. <clears throat> I'm sorry, a stain consistency. But uh, it is starting to flow together which is pretty neat. I'll bring the camera up here closer and show you. But the metal pieces definitely are going to need another coat. And I've been going back and forth and checking because, like I said, it's starting to fill in. So what it's doing is it's self-leveling and it's creating some drips here and there. So I have been going around and touching them up, getting rid of those drips. But the aluminum, the aluminum flowed really good. So here are some up-close picks of the steel 
and as you can see it's kind of spotty here and there and then again you can see here it's flowed really nice together so it is filling in some of the gaps from the rust pitting and you have to remember this is the first coat but now the aluminum the aluminum seemed to flow really nice it's slick I think after the second coat and then I'll use the 2k urethane on it it's gonna turn out really good a smooth finish one thing I did have an issue with is the cheap brushes like these right here they're just plain cheap and I'm gonna be pulling I noticed here if you can see this I have a little bit of the bristles are in there it pulled out a lot of bristles and I went back to using the brush that little artist brush that thing worked great I didn't lose any bristles I was able to get into these tight cracks and crevices here uh, worked out really well but I am going to go around and check one more time for uh, drips and then I'll let it set for approximately two hours come and check it and see if I can recoat a uh, second coat on it again This is the end of the second coat of the rust preventative. As you can see, it's flowing really nice now on the metal. It's starting to self-level out right now. The aluminum parts, they're pretty much like glass. I mean, I don't know how good the camera's picking that up, but that is smooth as silk, really. I mean it's amazing when you can get a reflection out of just gray paint which is their primer which is the rust preventative the only thing I see that I'm having an issue with is on my ball joints and I knew this would be a problem they're starting to stick because the um, paint is hardening so I'm gonna have to after this go around which is the second coat try to free those up and make sure they're loose um, up here uh, you can also see that it's starting to get into that ball joint. Getting ready to apply the 2K urethane. Um, I have it mixed to a 3 to 1 mixture and I did it in a small batch. I only have 2 ounces here so I'm going to go ahead and start on it and see how far I can get. Um, if I have to mix up some more I will to finish but this will be the first coat of the 2K. So this is the first coat of the two-part urethane. Um, it went on fairly well. Uh, I think some of the problems, I'm not necessarily going to say problems, but I think some of the things were that the rust prohibitor was not completely cured. So with that being said, if it was cured, I would think I would have had to sand it down to scuff the edges. So we only went to where it was dry to the touch. Um, it was a little past what I would do for a second coat of rust prohibitor, but for what we did here, um, when I put it on, I did seem like it, it drug a little bit, but that could just be the way this paint is for the 2K urethane, because it is kind of an epoxy. You have a hardener, and then you have the urethane. So, like say I would start up here and I'd start painting, and then I'd get down here and I'd see a spot that I missed when I'd go up to it it would drag like this part was already setting um, if I kept the brush nice and wet I was able to get decent coverage but I was not trying to get 100 percent coverage because this is a two uh, a two coat um, process here which 
I only used, I mixed up one and a half of paint to half of hardener, which would be three to one, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I have enough left over that I could probably easily do one more of these. I haven't touched that. I could probably easily do one more of these A-arms. Um, so that is the right amount. So I at least have several different batches I can make up over there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I will... What I'm going to do is I will let this dry and I'm going to let this dry to basically the same consistency is what I've been shooting for every time to where when I touch it, it doesn't leave my fingerprint. But then again, I do not want it dry to where I can rub my hand down it and I don't, or my finger down it and I don't get any resistance. Um, as of right now, it's still pretty tacky. Um, so I will end up doing, the, doing this at least one more time. So stay tuned. It's been about 17 hours since I did the second coat of the 2K urethane. Everything looks really good. I see a few spots um, just like down here in this crevice that needs a little bit of paint. Um, maybe a white mark, mark right here um, that needs a little paint on it. So I am going to do a third coat basically on just the A-arms, the upper and lower A-arms, and the spindles. I'm not going to do anything with the stabilizer bar and the stabilizer links. Those look really good, but we are going to put a third coat on here. I will bring the camera up uh, close to the parts and I'll show you uh, kind of how everything looks. It's really turning out nice. If I take a part here and stick it over by the sled, let me do that for you. I know this is the wrong side, but if you take this part and put it over here by the sled, man, it's pretty sweet. So, let's mix up that third batch and get a third coat on everything. So here's how the part looks. The flow is really good. I mean, all these marks here are all casting marks. Those aren't runs. That's all casting. All this pitting that I have right here, that pitting is from uh, the salt. But it, it flowed into the pitting really nice. That's not a run. That's a casting mark. Inside of there. Uh, this was the other one that has like right there needs another coat so like I said you just can't do a little coat here and there so I'm gonna do a whole coat so this would be coat number three on a arms and spindles here are all the parts after three coats of the 2k urethane and it is laid on pretty slick you wouldn't think from brushing it on it would be this slick but it sure self levels out nice once you get the coating thick in the beginning um, it's blotchy and doesn't look very well for some reason it's hard to apply a smooth coat but three coats and it really smooths out nice also here on these uh, ball and sockets here on the steering stabilizer I need to get all this paint cleaned off of there which is not a problem it it seems to come off pretty easy but we're gonna start getting these parts down get the sled out get everything assembled